Hey everyone, welcome back to some new malicious compliance stories. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Sheep Manager. I was a recent engineering graduate, working full time, making pretty good money. I decided I wanted to propose to my girlfriend and needed that good diamond ring money. So I randomly took a job as a waiter at a local diner and would work afternoons, nights and weekends. Making pretty bad money, but it was extra, so I didn't care. If you have ever worked at a job you don't need, it really is eye-opening. So as I'm sure most of you know, waiters and waitresses have side work to do at the end of their shift. The state I lived in paid $2 an hour for servers on top of whatever tips they take home. So the side work is the worst, because it's non-tip labor. On my second week at the job, my end of shift side work was to scrape down the ice cream freezer frost buildup. When freezers run for a long time, condensation forms and then freezes on the inside of the freezer walls. I had worked at an ice cream shop as a teenager, so I was very familiar with ice cream freezers. Normally you just let the freezer warm up and melt the frost off, but the owners didn't do it that way. Instead, I was encouraged to pay a busboy $5 for him to scrape the frost. Now in my mind, that just sounds like I am paying an employee to do work at a restaurant I don't own, nor profit from. So I said no, I'll do it myself. The manager didn't like that at all, but she couldn't really do anything about it. My tips were already in my pocket and she couldn't force me to give my money away. I open up the freezer and see that there are about 3 inches or more of frost on the walls. I know from experience that this is several years of frost build up. These walls haven't been frost free in years. So I asked the manager how much frost she wants me to remove, warning her it would take a while to scrape them down to the bare metal. She snidely said that the bus boys remove every scrap of frost every week and that's what she expected from me. Ok, you asked for it. Over the next two hours I scraped, sweated, grunted and struggled with this frost. It was a chest freezer, so I was bent overhead inside the freezer. The ice cream had to be moved out of the way, so it all melted and dropped onto the carpet. The freezer was in the dining area, so guests were treated to awful noises in my back in the air. I sweat like a maniac and probably smelled awful. Everyone in the whole restaurant could hear this cacophony. The manager kept coming back to heckle me and asked, you gonna give up? Come on, just pay the bus boy. It's late and I know you have work in the morning. My fellow servers, mostly mid 40s people, were actively rooting against me. My arms were wrecked for weeks after this. It was 1 in the morning, 24 hour diner and I had been on my feet at 2 jobs for like 18 hours. But I was earning money and 2 dollars an hour was enough to keep my reserve ironclad. Plus I was so mad at the insistence that I pay her employees for her. After 2 hours and 6 gallons of melted ice cream the manager gave up and sent me home. Only a third of the frost was gone and I was 4 dollars richer. Tip your servers, they probably put up with so much. The next story is called Condo Adventures. I have just purchased my first piece of real estate, a condo of my very own. It is on the third floor of a fourth floor building with a gorgeous lake view. Another important piece of info is that the previous owner apparently never cleaned, like ever. They were the only owner since the condo was built in 2004 and it was absolutely disgusting when I moved in. I spent the first month bleaching the entire inside. And that my friends is when we arrive at our main story. As I noted, the gorgeous view was a huge selling point of this particular unit. It has a beautiful deck overlooking a great lake and pool. However, it was covered in slimy green mold and algae. After I made the inside habitable, I wanted to get the deck in shape for the upcoming warm weather. I checked the rules documents and it said nothing about washing your deck. So I presumed, like at my previous rental condo, that a courtesy heads up to those below you was expected. I head down to the first floor, introduce myself to the neighbor two floors below and let her know I'd like to power wash my deck. She tells me to go ahead and do whatever I need to do, just let her know when I settle on an exact day and time. Great. Head upstairs to the second floor, enter neighbor Kelly. Kelly is a renter of 15 years and before I can even finish my request, she just says, no, that's definitely not ok with me. I explain that my deck is growing things and her response is just, well decks get dirty, that's just how it goes. 
She simply guessed that I would ask this inconvenience of her. She'd have to move her furniture. Unless the office explicitly gives me permission, she is not on board. So come Monday morning, I head right to the office. Apparently, Kelly is a known annoyance and the property manager and HOA board president are apologetic. Luckily, the board is meeting tonight and they can draft a policy on deck washing. A week later, I get an email that Kelly has lobbied a member of the board and as a result, power washing of decks is not allowed. Apparently, some neighbors dislike the sludge that drips down as a result. But good news! I can wash my deck the old-fashioned way with a scrub brush, garden hose and soap. Cue malicious compliance. What would have taken 15 minutes of power washing turns into an entire day of scrubbing. I mix a homemade, eco-friendly deck wash that needs to be scrubbed on, left to sit for 15 minutes and then rinsed off. Due to the level of grossness, it took many, many applications and disgusting green suds are flying everywhere. Kelly is fuming. She did not realize that soap would be part of the deal when I informed her of my new washing plans. I guess she thought she had successfully limited me to just a garden hose. She is very upset that there are suds on her windows and door. Threats of reporting me to the board ensue, patio doors are slammed, angry texts are sent. On my way to work Monday, I put my head into the office. They had received complaints from Kelly and told her I had permission for everything. I have not heard from her since. The last story is called Justice Served. So this happened in 2018 when I was working at a KFC outlet in the UK. Anybody who has worked fast food knows that there are times when the rush hour gets really hectic, especially if your franchise is on a busy street. I worked at this place on the weekends because it was the busiest time for the store and the only time I could take out from uni studies. At our busiest, we dealt with about a thousand customers in a 12 hour workday, with about half of them being in these rush hour slots. I was part of the front of house staff. This meant my job was to take orders, deal with and listen to the customers' questions and complaints, pack their orders, make ice creams and shakes and hand them out as well. At any given time, I was doing one, two or all of these jobs together. Since we would get so busy, we had always aimed to have about two people on the registers, two people packing and one person specifically for handing out the orders by calling out the order number on the receipt. The handing out the orders job was the easiest part and involved literally just standing there, which is why most of our staff used to work that station when they were tired, myself included. Fast forward to 4 months into the job and one of our old staff members, we'll call her Lisa, comes back to join the team again. She had been working there before I had joined and so knew everyone beforehand. She was also kind of pretty and this will be important later. Now, before I proceed, I wanna say that none of my co-workers had any issues with me and that my boss loved my work. I was so well received at this job that, when I left, they gifted me a guitar as a going away present. I had good English and I'm very friendly, so I was immediately settled in. My co-workers even playfully nicknamed me Skinny and joked around with me all the time. However, Lisa didn't like that because she could see that I was the center of attention due to my hyper energy. One fine Saturday, I go into work and realize that I've been made responsible for the part of the front of house process which is to yell out order numbers and give the customers their food, dealing with anything that might be wrong or missing. Fair enough, I had a really busy Friday and was hoping for something easy to do. I spent the first 6 hours of my shift doing this job. And after the staff for the first half of the day left, I decided to have the remaining staff out until our co-workers for the second half of the day came in. In comes Lisa for the second half of the day and she's been made responsible for packing the orders, which is probably the most taxing job. This part of the workflow is so taxing that it always has at least two people handling that station. We were short staffed that day and so Lisa was tasked to do this job alone, which was probably not the best decision by my manager. However, since she had worked here before, he trusted her to get the job done. We also had a rotation for our posts and it was her turn to handle that section that day. As if by some stroke of luck, rush hour started right as she came in, so she didn't even have time to prepare herself. What's even funnier is that she came in with a bad mood, so she definitely didn't want to work that day. We have a large screen right above the packing section that the customers can see. It displays their order numbers with details of their order and the order number displayed on it. Customers can have a look at that and be patient as they wait for their orders to be rolled out. 
Once an order is successfully completed, the order disappears from the screen, allowing the rest of the orders to be bumped up the priority list. This screen also had a timer on each order, which should under no circumstances be allowed to go over 7 minutes. If that happens, the timer turns red, alerting us to work faster. Usually, this screen is not supposed to go beyond 7 orders at a time, but it has enough functionality to display up to 15 orders. Now Lisa was trying her best, but as the watch hour increased, the number of orders waiting went up exponentially and the customer started to line up. The screen went beyond 15 orders waiting, with red plastered all over it. And at this point, it was obvious that Lisa couldn't handle the packing section alone. One of my coworkers nudged me to go and help her out, since I was basically doing the easiest job just standing around. I decided this was for the best, and so I walked up and started packing orders next to her. As I did so, she stopped doing the packing, looked me dead in the eyes and with the most threatening look said, go do your own job. I tried to be nice as usual and explained to her kindly how crowded it was getting, but it was obvious that she didn't want to listen. Not wanting the business to be affected, I decided to go alert my manager. But just as I was about to go ask him for some advice, she says in the most condescending tone, I don't know why you're trying so hard to work next to me, but it's honestly creepy and you should stop. Now, I will admit, I'm an average looking guy, definitely not in her league, but she was under some sort of misconception that I had somehow developed feelings for her. She was probably used to guys running after her and placed me in the same row without even getting to know me, which I found incredibly disrespectful. When I realized she was thinking I was some sort of simp or my will to want to help her flew right out of the window. I casually walked back to my station and grinned, knowing what was about to unfold. In the next 30 minutes, the screen was now full with about 40 orders waiting. In fact, there were so many orders waiting that you couldn't even see half of them on the screen because they were so down on the list. Customers were standing around disgruntled and hungry, looking at Lisa as she was panicking, running around trying to do everything by herself. My coworkers had seen how she had treated me and so none of them approached to help her out. She was all over the place with the orders, chucking the bags in the air towards me, dropping fries on the floor, missing items. And the customers were complaining to high heaven at this shoddy service. I mean, even by fast food standards, this was bad. Since I was the one handing out the orders, I was hearing all the complaints and trying to sedate the customers as much as possible with a bigger smile on my face. It was pretty bad and the only time I had ever fun listening to people complain. What made it better was that the customers knew I wasn't to blame and so we suddenly judged Lisa together as we watched her run around in a frenzy. Making casual trips to the back as Lisa was visibly shedding her hair out of stress was the best part because I was just doing my job whilst Lisa was halting the entire business by herself. Lisa just dropped some fries on the floor, we're gonna need a new batch. That burger that Lisa just sent out, she put it in the wrong customer's bag and they have just come back demanding a refund. A customer's complaining that the food is cold and wants a fresh burger. The thing is that the back of house staff was doing all of their work on time, so cold food and the like was not their problem. But because Lisa was messing up, they had to follow and remake the food, which meant wasting materials and also a bad mood as they had to work extra for no reason. That's when my assistant manager, whom I was really good friends with, ran out to the front befuddled and asked me in a concerned voice, what's going on? Why aren't you helping her out? I explained casually what Lisa had told me after I had tried really hard to help, loud enough so that the customers could hear. You could tell by the look on my manager's face that this wasn't his first rodeo with Lisa. Dejectedly and quietly, he turned around and started helping Lisa to pack without saying another word to me. What made it even sweeter was that after about 5 minutes, another senior member of staff came to the front and chucked Lisa out of her station and towards the back of house staff because she was being such a hindrance. In about 10 minutes, all orders were cleared and the dust had settled. I was then tasked with handling the packing because I was the fastest at doing that. Lisa had to prep burgers in the back over the smoldering heat of the fryer, which probably melted all of her makeup off her pretty little face. Imagining what she was getting from the manager and the embarrassment she had just faced in front of an entire crowd of people was probably the most satisfying feeling I have ever had. Not because I was happy she was struggling, but because I got back at her for thinking I was below her just because she was a little bit better looking than I was. 
And the cherry on top was the fact that she had asked for this all by herself. Just this served. Needless to say, Lisa never worked the packing section alone again and tried her best to get along with me after the fact. But I never helped her of my own volition unless she specifically asked me to. I didn't want her to feel creeped out after all. Thanks for watching this episode, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel for even more videos. I hope you have a great day, stay safe, bye bye.